Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about Cisco's multi-chassis ether channel options of StackWise, VPC, and VSS. Matching ether channel settings have to be configured on the switches on both sides of the link. You know that already. You can configure separate port channels from a switch to redundant upstream switches. Like you see in the diagram here, I've got my access layer, access free switch, and it has got a port channel with bundled links going up to CD1, and it's got another separate port channel with other physical interfaces that are bundled into a port channel going up to CD2. The problem with this is that Spanning Tree will see those separate port channels as two separate interfaces and it'll block one path if a loop is formed, like it is here. So in our example, CD1 is the root bridge. So the port channel from access three to that is going to be forwarding, but the port channel going up to CD2 would form a potential loop. So spanning tree is going to block that port channel. So I've got four physical interfaces configured as uplinks here, but only two of them are forwarding, so I'm only getting half of my possible bandwidth. So that brings us back to the same problem of only using half of our available physical bandwidth again. We configured that same topology in the lab in the last lecture. So things were better after we configured ether channel. This is how it was before we did it. So again, CD1 is the root bridge, and you see from Axis 3, it's got those four physical uplinks, but only one of them was forwarding traffic, which was the interface connected to CD1, and exactly the same on Axis 4 as well. So four physical ports, only one of them forwarding traffic. After we configured Ether Channel, we have two out of the four forwarding traffic now rather than one so it's better and actually i've still got the lab running so let's go on there and just verify that so i'll go on to access three and do a show ether channel summary and you can see that i've got my two port channels one is going up to the first core distribution layer switch the second one is going up to the second they're both up if I now do a show spanning tree VLAN 10, which is the VLAN that my PCs are in, I can see that out of those two port channels, one of them is forwarding traffic. This is the port channel connected to the root bridge, and the other one is blocking because it's forming a potential loop. So still not perfect. If we go back to the slides, there is a way that we can get this configured so that we are actually forwarding on all of our physically connected uplinks. And the way that we do that is with multi-chassis ether channel. So some switches will support that. When we configure it, the switches support a shared ether channel from different switches. So you see the diagram I've got here now, in fact, if I go back one slide, a couple of slides, normally we would have two separate port channels, one going up to CD1 and another one going up to CD2. When those core distribution layer switches support multi-chassis ether channel though, I can do a single port channel which goes to both of them. Now, again, the switches must be configured with matching settings. When you configure Ether Channel, you need matching settings on both sides of the links. So here, Axis 3 has got a port channel going upstream. 
and switches CD1 and CD2 have got a shared port channel going downstream. So CD1 and CD2 need to be advanced level switches that support talking to each other and having a shared port channel going downstream. So that is supported on some models of Cisco switch. When you do configure this, spanning tree is still enabled but it only sees a single logical interface on both sides. It sees a port channel going upstream from axis three, and it sees a single port channel going downstream from CD1 and shared with CD2. So it sees that as just a single link, so there's no loop there. So spanning tree does not block any of the ports. We have all of them forwarding. We get the full use of all of our physical bandwidth. It supports full load balancing and redundancy across all the interfaces. If any of the interfaces goes down, it will fail over to another available interface. So the technologies that Cisco have available that support this are StackWise, VSS, and VPC. Now, a single switch is not gonna support all three of these. Different platforms of switches support different options and if a switch does support one, it will only be one. So the switch will either support stack-wise, or it will support VSS, or it will support VPC, not two or three at the same time. And this is only on the higher end switches. If you've got one of Cisco's lower end switches, then this is not going to be supported. So which option is supported on which family of switches? Well, stack-wise, is on Catalyst switch platforms, including the Catalyst 3750, 3850, and 9000. Notice I'm just saying including here because Cisco come out with new models of switches very regularly. And when they do come out with a new model of switch, it's likely to support one of these three options. So this will be updated over time. If you have a look at the picture here, this is a stack of switches that have been configured with StackWise. StackWise uses special proprietary cables at the back of the switches. When you do configure a StackWise stack, the separate physical switches all operate as if they're one switch and they're configured as if they're one switch as well. That is similar to the next option, which is VSS, the virtual switching system. That's supported on the Catalyst 4500 and 6500 families. And the last option is one that's a little, a little bit different, is VPC, virtual port channel. That's supported on the Nexus switches. And rather than stacking the switches together and then being managed as if they're a single switch, when you use this on the Nexus, they're still configured as two separate switches, but you do a matching configuration on them and that allows for a shared port channel from those switches. Okay, so those are the MEC options. At the CCNA exam level, Cisco expect you to know a broad overview of them, but they don't expect you to know how to configure these. If you go on to CCMP level or one of the other CCNA tracks like data center, you'll learn then how to configure and monitor these technologies. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.